Hi, everybody. Uh, great to be here. And thank you so much for attending uh, this talk about the new modern data stack and how open source is actually pouring uh, this new way of uh, building data stack. So as uh, Summit said, so I'm Michel Trico, a little bit about myself. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Airbyte. I've been working in, the, in data for the past uh, 15 years. And today I'm really focusing on building Airbyte, which is an open source data integration platform. And what it does, it, it allows users to move data from any sources, whether it's an API, whether it's a file, a database, and get the data into the destination of their choice, whether it's a database, a data warehouse, or uh, a data lake, and soon also to uh, external APIs. And today we have like a, a Slack community of almost 2,000 users. Uh, and yeah, we've been uh, having a, a pretty solid adoption since we released Airbag. So before we get started about what the, the modern data stack looks like, let's look at how uh, the world of data has evolved over the years. And what we've seen recently is there has been a shift in how data team are actually managing and replicating data into their data stack. Um, and the historical pattern has been to do extract transform and load. So extract is really about pulling data from different sources, then applying and introducing basically your business bias to the data. And then once the transformation is done, you actually load the transform data into the destination of your choice where it's going to be leveraged by like your finance team for if it's dashboarding or like some, or also for operational use cases. And the, the problem with ETL is that it is very inflexible, meaning that the transformation is so tied to the extraction that if you want to modify uh, your transformation, for example, and you want to add new data types or new fields or new record into your transformation, then you need to reload all of the data because you never have the raw data available. And also, like this transformation system are generally very complex. It can be a custom DSL or it can just be code for transforming the data, which means that people that could be unable to work with data cannot, and they always have to rely on data engineers or software engineers to actually manage this transformation. And because the extraction, the transformation, and the loading are very coupled together, you end up with using tools that are very monolithic and that try to do everything horizontally and try to address every one of your use cases. The problem is we all know that monolithic tools are very good at addressing what they were built for, meaning the 70% of generally what you need. And for the 30 remaining ones, you have to build it yourself. And so what we've seen over the past few years is that the data teams have been moving from ETL to ELT, meaning that they try to push all the transformation and all the business logic as far as possible from the data. And it means that now you can have extraction routine and loading routine that are general purpose and that can be reused across many other organizations and that try to stay as close as possible to what the raw data at the source, if it's an API file, is. And ELT fixes a lot of the ETL related issues. So first of all, the data is always available. It means that if in the future you want to change how you're doing your analysis, you don't need to reload all of the data because it's missing because it's already there. And also because ELT, you have all the data, suddenly you can have other members in your team to start doing more investigation and they can do it autonomously. The data is there, they don't have to involve data engineers. So you can enable data scientists, you can enable um, data uh, like analytics engineer to do all the analytics uh, uh, work. And also in general, when you have bugs in ETL uh, pipelines, it's generating the transformation. And if you have a problem in your transformation, then you need to fix your transformation and you need to reload all of the data. With ELT, it's very simple. It's very uh, foolproof loading and, uh, and extraction. And the data is there. And if there is a problem in the transformation, you don't have to pay this long uh, 
like reload of the data. And so with this new paradigm in mind, uh, what we've seen is that now team can create very agile data stack that is tailored to their own needs. And when you look at how company and the, the like the needs of companies around data, it's every time it's different. Like it is extremely, extremely complex to build a solution that can address all the needs. Like companies have different types of data that they manage, they have different available skills internally that can work with the data, they work with different scales. Some of them are working with gigabyte scale, some of them are working with petabyte scale, and they have different budget for what they can allocate to, uh, to data security and privacy requirements, as well as turnaround and compliance. So with all of that, it makes it extremely hard for all this monolithic end-to-end -end horizontal solution to, uh, to be efficient. And what we've seen recently is really companies are really picking the best of breed for every one of their data function. So for extract and load, they can be using Airbyte. For data warehouse, they can pick Snowflake or BigQuery. For quality, they can use any tool that they believe serve their needs the best. And same thing for transformation, same thing for all the consumption around like BI and visualization. Um, and of course, now you have all these building blocks and the way you can actually get and assemble this building block is by using uh, the best of the glue, which is like in that, in that particular case, going to be Airflow or any other DAG uh, manager. But this is basically becoming the backbone of your data, of your data stack. So now I want to show you a, an example of how quickly you can start setting your uh, modern data stack with the best of breed. And here, what I've done is obviously I've selected Airbyte, which is going to be responsible for all the extraction and loading of the data from the sources that matter to you. Then using DBT for all the transformation and Airflow for all the uh, the management and, uh, and the workflow management. So. First of all, a little bit of background. So as I said, Airbyte is a data integration platform. Today, we support 80 high quality data connectors and we're targeting to get to 200 by the end of the year. And if by any chance you're using Airbyte and there is a missing connector or a connector that you want to modify, Airbyte comes with a CDK, like our connector development kit. So you can develop your own connector, contribute back to the open source project or just modify it and keep it to yourself. And if you have any uh, need for help on like building these connectors or operating a byte, we have the, the Slack community. And of course, we have a super cute little mascot. Um, and so the way Airbyte works is it's powered by uh, a data exchange protocol. So it's a way of encoding, uh, like encoding and serializing the data to be communicated between sources and destination. And that allows to build in the open source project sources that are completely independent from in the destination in which you're going to write the data. And this way, you can have any kind of combination between sources and destination. And on top of that, we have all the platform piece, which uh, manages the scheduling, the config management, the state, so that we can support incremental uh, updates, incremental loading. And you have an API and a UI and a CLI to control all of that. And Airbyte can run on any type of platform as long as it supports running uh, containers. Now, on the transformation side, you have DBT. And DBT has, is extremely popular transformation engine. It can run on top of all databases and warehouses as long as they support uh, like a SQL syntax. And the reason why it's been so popular is that DBT has brought to the data world all the good practices that already existed in software engineering around like version control, testing, and packaging. And of course, third one, Airflow. I don't think I need to talk too much about, about it. Uh, everybody knows it. <laughs> And this is the high level picture of what we're going to be building. So on the left side, you have all the different sources we want to pull data from, getting into Airbyte, getting pushed into a data warehouse. And over there, you have access to all the different transformation that your data analyst, data scientist, analytics engineer might be writing 
to conduct their own analysis, their own uh, investigation on data. And on the right side, it's more around like the activation of the data, which is for dashboarding, visualization, uh, BI, and also reverse ETL, which is about sending the data back to uh, like uh, a Salesforce or uh, a service where the data is going to be leveraged. So let's take a quick look at a demo. And the, the whole code for the demo is available on our GitHub repository. So here I have like the three tools that I'm going to be using uh, over there. So first of all, let's look at Airbyte. Uh, behind the scene, what I've done is I've uh, I've started all the, the containers for Airbyte, for Airflow, for Superset that I'm going to be using for, for dashboarding. Uh, so let's get started. So here I'm just giving, like setting up Airbyte for the first time. I'm going to skip the onboarding. And let's create a destination. Uh, and here I'm going to build a great database. And what it does behind the scene, it's pulling all the information about the connectors, including uh, like all the fields that are necessary to connect to that uh, to that destination. Um, okay. Now I'm setting up the, the destination. It's going, to it's going to test my credentials, validate that it's working. It's working. And on the source side, what I'm going to do is create a dashboard for uh, like the stars on the Airbyte repository. So very simple, but if you did not have any of these tools, you would have to write everything by hand. And uh, so here is GitHub. There you go. So same thing, pulling all the required field. And there you go. Testing the credentials. So now we have a source and a destination. So what we want to do is connect our source to Postgres. So let's do it. It's revalidating the source credential and the because it's never been used uh, and the destination credential. And what it's going to do at that point, it's pulling all the available uh, schemas that are available at the source level. So you can see it's not going to be too surprising. You have like assign these comments, uh, issues, etc. And let's only pull the stargazer information. Uh, so let's do that. And here you can see I'm going to select a sync frequency to be manual. And because I want Airflow to actually trigger the data replication. And here I'm selecting what I call the basic, basic normalization. And this is what dbt is being used behind the scene. And what dbt does is it's going to take all the data that is like in a JSON format coming from the GitHub API. And it's going to help on breaking it, breaking down all of this record into tables that can be written into, uh, into our database. So let's set up the connection. There we go. So now we have a connection. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure my DAG uh, in Airflow to actually kick off uh, this particular sync. So this is happening behind the scene. Um, there we go. So let's go on Airflow. And let's wait for the DAG to be, um, to be added. Uh, might take a few seconds. Up. Should be there soon. There we go. Uh, so this is a very, very simple uh, DAG. The only thing it does is it kicks off uh, a data replication. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to unpause uh, my DAG to enable it. And let's go directly to Airbytes, where you see that Airflow is now uh, kicking off a data replication. So of course, after that DAG, you could completely uh, sequence like dbt transformation or any kind of other processing, like quality checks, etc. And here you can see that now the connector is kicking off and starting to pull data from, from GitHub. And of course, here it's GitHub, but it could be anything. It could be a database. It could be an S3 directory, and boom, now we've imported 
almost 4,000 records uh, directly into our database. Uh, so let's look now at how we, what we can do with that data. Uh, so I'm going to go on Superset, which is also an open source uh, project for everything related to uh, dashboarding. And let's add my database. Ah. Well, interesting, the joy of uh, a demo. <laughs> uh, let me log in to it. There we go. So let's go on the database. Perfect. So I'm going to add the database to which I've written all my GitHub uh, data. Up. Just going to update my password. And Yep, perfect. And now in Superset, you have this concept of data sets, which is like how you materialize, like, like how you uh, explain to data set where the data is within your data sources. So let's do, so this is the Postgres database that I've created. Let's go in the public schema. I'm going to select the Stargazer. I'm adding it. And let's go and create our first, um, dashboard. So I'm going to take a line type of uh, dashboard. There you go. I'm going to use the start at as my time column. And I'm going to group and count how many stars I had every single day. So count start. There you go. Running the query. And this is what you had since the beginning of the project. You can see some nice spike. I think that's probably when we announced, we had some announcements around the, the project. And let's see what we get today as the, the total, as a cumulative sum. And basically, you can now see the trend of how the stars are going with a with our byte. And what I want to, to show is really how quickly with open source project, you can build a very solid and very uh, efficient uh, data stack. Um, of course, there is a lot more you can do with uh, like the GitHub data or any data. But I think that shows the point of how quickly and how available these type of technologies are today for, for data teams. And by using that, you can very, very quickly enable roles that are maybe less technical, but extremely data safe. Um, so yeah, I, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, please ask. And otherwise, you can find me I'm on Twitter. Uh, this is my email address. And you can find us on our public Slack. So everything is public at Airbyte. We, 